George Eastman, the founder of Kodak, once said, the progress of the world depends almost entirely upon education. And over the last eight years, leaders within our own community have dedicated their time and vision to help honor these words. An impassioned group of school committee members set out to make some revolutionary changes on behalf of students in the Cumberland School District. The committee's vision for providing the best education came to life through the masterful decision-making of Dr. Thornton, a newly appointed superintendent. He knew that he needed to be surrounded by strong leadership, focused on teaching and learning to support and operationalize his district vision. How did they do this? Well, together, the team was able to pioneer a one-to-one -one Chromebook initiative, implement a new ELA and math curriculum in grades K through eight, increase graduation rates, increase AP course offerings, revitalize high school culture, improve our high school ranking according to Rhode Island Monthly's magazine, ranking as fifth out of 49th of all schools. Increasing interventionists, serving at-risk students, increasing our ELA park proficiency by 7%, increasing math park proficiency by 6%, implementing a district-wide standard-based grading system, and invested in resources and professional development in order to align the next generation science standards. Through our combined work, we have all been able to make Cumberland a town where new families and couples move for our fantastic schools because of our steadfast dedication to quality public education. But now, as a town, we're at a crossroad. We have the choice to either move forward or lose momentum. What would the impact be on students? So despite being a senior, any loss of any CHS staff member will have a significant difference with the education as well as the resources in the school. With the amount of teachers we are said to be losing, that's a classroom full of teachers that could provide kids with much needed support and great resources that students really need. All of our staff uh, contribute to our community and the Cumberland school systems and even just losing a single person could make a huge change and cause a student to lose a bond that they formed. We as a town have been letting our schools whittle, whittle away down to working with the bare minimum and we've been able to thrive continuously with working on that so right now we're being punished for being able to do well and that is something that's completely ironic and should not be occurring. We're not in the middle of a war-torn area like the Malala Fund supports. We are in a suburban middle-class town that does have the funds and has the means to support their education and their children deserve it. It's not something that should be toyed with or used as a fight or used as a political stance. It's our future and that's not something that should be messed with under any way, shape, or form. So I asked myself, you know, how will student learning be impacted if, if teachers are kind of laid off and not rehired? Well, first of all, you're, you're going to sacrifice so many incredible resources for all of our students, but particularly the most, the most vulnerable. Currently, there's a cohort of teachers being trained in blended learning to better personalize teaching and learning to meet the needs of the diverse students that we have in our district. Um, as I sat in the last training, I noticed that about one third of the teachers there will be displaced or not recalled based on the potential cuts. Um, we have been chosen to be the leaders in the district to bring back what we're learning to our other staff in our buildings and losing these teachers will negatively impact all of that forward momentum. Hi, I'm Susan McLaren. I'm a paraprofessional at McCourt Middle School. I myself um, work with the entire sixth grade team at McCourt and have for the last 16 years. And I have the advantage of seeing these children individually sometimes or as small groups to help them not only academically but emotionally. Um, it, it all depends on what their needs are. I can't imagine not having that extra help in that classroom. Hi, my name is Jen Marvel, and I'm a math interventionist here at Ashton School for the last five years. The long-term goal of math intervention is to help students gain independent strategies and take responsibility for their own learning. So my role as a math interventionist is to support individual students 
who are unable to meet grade level expectations. Without intervention services, the reality is that these gaps would only widen, especially given the rigor of the Common Core state standards. The math intervention structure that Cumberland has put into place would be decimated. We currently have eight math interventionists, and these cuts would leave us with only three. This is a 63% reduction in staff that work directly with students. Hi, my name is Sarah Godino. I am the Spanish teacher at North Cumberland Middle School, but I'm also a parent of a North Cumberland Middle School student. I recently moved from Cranston to Cumberland because of the program that we offer here at North. My son is in the Strive program and he needs, needed some things, some changes that were not offered in Cranston. Some of the ways that the cuts will impact my son is the, I know that reading and math interventionists are going to be cut across the district and he, his favorite class is actually reading intervention and he's made big growths in reading intervention and in math intervention. So if those programs were cut, he would really be affected. Hi, my name is Jim Field. I'm the Behavior Intervention Coordinator in the district. I also am in charge of our PBIS initiative. Uh, PBIS stands for Positive Behavior Interventions and Support. Um, and we are a PBIS district. Um, and in the state, we're looked at as a leader in PBIS. And a core component of this initiative is that we're being more proactive than reactive in our response to students with social and emotional um, concerns. Our mental health providers are the leaders of our student support team, specifically um, for our kids that we consider at risk or in need of individualized supports. Um, so the proactive things that our mental health providers um, are doing are really helping to improve the overall culture, climate, safety, and learning in our district. So a lot of times our mental health staff are used in a reactive way. The more proactive things that we can do with our students, the less reactive um, things that we're going to have because we're getting everybody in a better place. Um, with every mental health provider that's eliminated or reallocated, um, the opportunities for those proactive supports decreases and the probability of the reactive um, situations increases. Um, the continuous delivery of those proactive um, supports by our mental health providers has had and will continue to have a direct impact on the overall positive um, culture, climate, safety, and learning for all students in our district. My name is Dean Palmer, one of the instructional technology coaches here at Cumberland High School. Having us here in the building has really helped the teachers and the students because it gives us in-building support for any of the Chromebook issues that might happen. If a student comes down during the day and their Chromebook stops working, the teacher sends them right down, we repair it within about five minutes, or they come back with a loaner Chromebook and we can get it repaired for them. If you were a classroom teacher and you had everything set up on the internet and we're in a 21st century blended learning environment and your class of 26 students is in front of you and you ask them to take out their Chromebooks and half the class raises their hand and says, I don't have my Chromebook because it's broken, the battery's dead, or there weren't any loaners, you can't get your work done. The teachers need to concentrate on the education of the student we concentrate on the technology tools that they're using. So this way, if you don't know how to use a technology tool, we come and show you or help you with that. With the Tech Support Leadership Program, or we call it Clipper Tech Support, uh, it's given students the opportunity to learn how to repair and troubleshoot Chromebooks that they wouldn't have had before. It gives some of them the vision of what their future could be. If they're thinking of going into technology, they get a hands-on experience of how to repair a Chromebook and how to troubleshoot technology. The one-to-one -one initiative has given our school the forward momentum to move itself throughout the next century. Uh, 21st century classrooms are, are where we're headed. There's no reason for us to go backwards. So the internship has given me an opportunity to experience something that I would want to pursue as a career after high school. And without having this opportunity to take this class, I'm not really sure I would have found the tech field and build my interest in it and I found that I have a passion for it. So this program has also like renewed my passion for learning because before this I would just come to school, get what I had to do done and just go home and sleep, play video games, do me and not really think about anything else I had to do with school but instead of going right home after school I go to drone club and we work on building the drone, soldering, researching what's new, what's coming out, what are advantages of these parts versus this parts, batteries, 
So it's giving me like something else to attach me to the school that makes me want to learn more. Other districts throughout Rhode Island, Cumberland spends the least per pupil. This sobering statistic is only one of our educational hurdles that we as a district face. Let's compare ourselves with districts that have similar population and socioeconomic status. Is there a correlation between funding and student proficiency? Here's what we found. South Kingston spends $17,864 per pupil, and they achieved a park proficiency of 54%, with a teacher to student ratio of 1 to 13. North Kingston spends $15,450 per pupil, and they achieved a 50% park proficiency, with a teacher to student ratio of 1 to 16. Chair House spends 16565 per pupil. They achieved a 46% park proficiency with a teacher to student ratio of 1 to 14. If we look to our neighbors across the river, Lincoln, they spend $17,004 per pupil, and they achieved a park proficiency of 43% with a teacher to student ratio of 1 to 16. Cumberland spends $12,831 per pupil, the lowest in the state, and achieved a park proficiency of 39%, with a teacher to student ratio of 1 to 18. Our neighboring towns understand something fundamental. More resources equals better results. Do we have you thinking now about the lack of funding and the potential impact on student achievement? If not, consider the following statistics. Of the $1.3 million allocated to the Cumberland School Department in state aid, 4,503 Cumberland students received 55% or $157 per pupil. Whereas 487 Cumberland students who attend charter schools receive 45% or $1,000 $206 of that aid. Let's look at some staggering statistics of two districts of nearly identical size, Cumberland and Coventry. In 2015, Cumberland's operational budget was $58.2 million. Coventry's was $69.9 million. What if I told you about how much these districts spend on staff salaries? Cumberland spent $27.7 million whereas Coventry spent $38.2 million. What about instructional materials? Things like paper, pencils, and paper clips. Cumberland spent $456,000 on that, whereas Coventry spent $680,000. Next are charter school tuitions. Cumberland wrote a check for $2.5 million to charter schools, and Coventry spent $400,000. Let's look at pupil technology use. Cumberland spent $528,000, and Coventry spent $868,000. These inequalities have catastrophic consequences on our ability to maintain and sustain the path we're on. The harsh reality is a fast decline, a cliff-like fall. Just as it takes a great deal of time to reach an elite physical conditioning, it can all be rapidly lost. To this point, we discussed maintaining our current resources. We have yet to discuss innovation and vision for our schools. Do we have you thinking now? Imagine our future if only we could. Oh, and uh, by the way, some of the people who worked on this presentation would have their positions cut as a result of the dire financial circumstances we are facing. The bottom line is that we don't overspend, and we don't have an abundance of programs compared to our neighboring towns. If the proposed budget cuts are implemented, Cumberland will continue to be the largest suburban district with the lowest per people spending. Our staff, our teachers, our students, and our community are not okay with being last. Are you okay with being last?